Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 7 of the chapter Chemical Kinetics. Do you remember in part 2, I had tried to explain to you how do we find out the rate of a reaction. And for that, we had plotted these curves and these graphs and the graph had the concentration of the reactant or the product versus time. And when we plotted these curves, we said that whatever is the change in the concentration of the reactant divided by that time in which that change took place would give you the rate of the reaction. And the curve looked somewhat like this. And in the case of a reactant, this would be that for a reactant because initially when the time is zero, this is time and this is concentration. Initially when the time is zero, the concentration of the reactants is the highest. And as time passes and the reaction takes place, the concentration of the reaction keeps on decreasing. And then if we wanted to find out the average reaction rate, we would say, let us say that at time T1, any time T1, the ti at time T1, we would just plot this, uh, we would draw this line here. At any time T1, let us say, we would see where does it fall, this is T1. At that time, what was the concentration? It was the concentration was whatever R1. So let us say that the second time was, this was T2, this is T2. And if we find out what was R2, R2. If we want to find out the average rate of reaction, we would say R2 minus R1 divided by T2, T2 minus T1. That would be the time elapsed and the change in the concentration. And that would give you the rate of the reaction. From that, this rate of reaction that we calculated was the average rate of reaction. And then I explained to you that if for a certain instant we want to find out the instantaneous rate of reaction, what do we do? Let us say this is the point at which we want to find out the instantaneous rate of reaction. We draw a tangent to the curve and when we draw the tangent to the curve, we extrapolate it equally on both sides of the dot. That is that point where we want to at that time t at which we want to find out the instantaneous rate. We just extrapolate it equally on both sides and then we draw uh, perpendiculars or lines across it along parallel to the concentration line and parallel to the timeline and you'll get a right angled triangle. Now from this right angled triangle this becomes the small difference in time and this becomes the small difference in the concentration of the reactant. So from dr upon dt you calculate the instantaneous rate of reaction. Do you remember this is what I told you? Now, this equation was known as the differential rate equation. And the topic of this video is the integrated rate equation. From the differential rate equation, finding out the or calculating the rate of a reaction or the instantaneous rate sometimes becomes a little difficult. It's a little uncomfortable uh, to uh, calculate it that way. So we would rather want a simpler, a simple straight uh, equation. To do that, we would like to remove that differential or the differentiation. To do that, we integrate the uh, differential rate equation. And that is why we call it the integrated, the one that has been uh, to find out the instantaneous rate of a reaction, the differential equation when it is integrated to give us a clear cut equation, it is known as the integrated rate equation. So it is not convenient to determine the instantaneous rate from the slope of the tangent in the concentration versus time plot of the differential equation. So the calculation of the rate law or order of reaction from this differential equation becomes the differential equation itself is the rate law. So calculation of order of reaction from this also is difficult. So what should we do? We integrate the rate equation. This differential rate equation is integrated so that you can get a direct relationship. The integrated rate, rate equations are different for different orders of reactions. And there's a reason for that. Because in the rate law or in the rate equation, if you see, the reactants are raised to the power of their order. If it's a zero order reaction, the power would be zero. If it's a first order reaction, the sum of the powers of all reactants would be one. If it is uh, a second order reaction, it would be two. If it's a third order reaction, it would be three. So the differential, that is the integrated rate equation would be different for different orders of reaction because that power is going to change the value 
which would be which you would be integrating so let us see let us understand this better i will first explain in this video i'm going to tell you about the zero order reactions for a zero order reaction let us assume that there's a reactant and it proceeds to form a product that is p the rate of the reaction will be represented by the differential rate equation which is minus why minus because it is the reactant and the concentration of the reactant always decreases minus dr that is the change in the concentration of the reactant upon dt dt is the time taken the small minuscule time taken would be equal to k into r and since it's a zero order reaction the power of r would be zero right the can r is the concentration of the reactant to the power of zero and we know anything to the power of zero is one if you raise any value to the power of zero that would automatically become one so we can write this as rate would be equal to minus dr upon dt is equal to k into one so now if that is so then this take dt here this becomes equal to dr dr is equal to minus k dt what we did we took the negative sign here and we took the dt here so dr becomes equal to minus k dt now let us integrate both the sides when you integrate both the sides the integral of dr would be r would be equal to and minus k dt k is constant dt will be integrated so dt is t so minus kt plus i where i is the constant of integration right so let us assume now how do we find out what is the value of i in order to find out the value of i or allot some value to i let us assume or let us try to define this i let us assume that at initial time that is when the reaction had not started at time t is equal to zero the concentration of the reactant r would be equal to r zero that is the initial concentration this point the where you only had the reactant so at time t is equal to zero the concentration of r that is reactant would be equal to r zero so if we substitute these values in this equation let us do it r is equal to minus kt plus i so r for at time zero would be equal to r zero will be equal to minus k and t is zero therefore k into zero plus i now k into zero becomes zero so r naught becomes equal to i so at initial uh, time that is when the reaction had not started or at time t is equal to zero the constant of integration is equal to the initial concentration of the reactant now that we know what i is let us substitute the value of i in this equation right so let us substitute so this becomes r would be equal to minus kt and i can be defined as r0 if it is the initial uh, if we talk of time t is equal to 0 so this becomes equal to r becomes equal to minus kt plus r not or r0 now if you look at this this is somewhat like an equation r could be similar to y is equal to kt is mx and c is r not so this is the equation of a straight line if it's an equation of a straight line if you plot a graph now between the concentration that is r of the reactant and time that is t if now you plot a graph between the two you will get a straight line because this is the equation of a straight line and the slope of the line would be equal to minus k it would be a slanting it would be it would be going down so it is a negative slope it would be minus k and we can understand the concentration of reactant keeps on decreasing therefore it would be a negative slope so the slope would be equal to minus k and the intercept the point where it touches the that intercept here in the in this case would be equal to r0 the concentration the initial concentration of the reactant so if we plot r versus t that is concentration of the reactant versus time we get a straight line with slope which is equal to minus k and intercept which is equal to r not the slope would be a negative slope and it would be equal to minus k and the intercept intercept means that point where the line cuts across the axis 
So it will cut across the y-axis which is the concentration axis and that concentration would be R0. If we simplify this equation, this equation we are just rearranging. So we can say according to this equation, how would you write K? K would become equal to, now, if we are taking this, this side and we are trying to remove the negative, it would be R minus R0. If we are trying to remove the negative, we can say it is R0 minus R. Right? So it becomes K becomes equal to R0 minus R upon T. Now, purposefully by switching these, we, we have avoided the negative outside. It would have been the same thing. Numerically, if we kept the negative outside and wrote R minus R0, it would have been the same. Divided by, and in the end you take the T down there. So that becomes divided by T. So this was how we write the integrated rate equation for a zero order reaction. Let us take a few examples of zero order reactions. Examples of zero order reactions are some enzyme catalyzed reactions. Now what is a zero order reaction? A reaction which does not depend on the concentration of the reactant. Now enzyme catalyzed reactions, the enzyme is the catalyst. And the enzymes in the body are really present in very, very, very little quantities. So even if you have a large amount of the reactant, the amount of enzyme that is present, only that will determine the rate of the reaction, not the concentration of the reactant. So it's a zero order reaction. And since the enzyme itself is not a reactant, it is only coming in between helping the reaction going out. So you will not be in the rate equation. We are not going to put the concentration of the, uh, of the catalyst. Therefore, enzyme catalyzed reactions, they are usually zero order. Why? Because the reaction, even if the concentration of the reactant is far, far more, the amount of enzyme which is minuscule in any living body is very little. Therefore, it does not depend on the concentration of the reactant. Another example are some reactions which take place on metal surfaces. We'll take an example of that in the end also. So metals, whenever you have a metal surface and the reaction is taking place on the metal surface, it is the surface of the metal which becomes the limiting factor, just as we had the catalyst which became the limiting factor. If you have a small metal surface, however much reactant you have, the surface is only this much. The reaction that is going to take place is only going to take place on the surface of the metal. All the extra reactant is not going to affect it. The speed of the reaction will remain the same. That is what we are saying. That it does not, the rate of the reaction does not depend on the, uh, on the concentration of the reactant. It depends on the metal surface. Therefore, again, such a reaction would be a zero order reaction. Here is an example of a gaseous reaction, which is of one of this kind. 2NH3 gives at 1130 Kelvin with platinum as the catalyst gives you N2 plus 3H2. That is the dissociation of decomposition of ammonia. This takes place at a very high pressure and the metal surface that we use is platinum. So again, what happens and do you see the reactants and the products are all gaseous. So when the ammonia molecules, they deposit on platinum, let us say this is the platinum and we are pressurizing the gas that is ammonia. So ammonia molecules are stuck and at high pressure, the molecules have very little space between them because they are already, we have stuffed as many as possible on the metallic surface, on the platinum surface. Now, there may be ammonia molecules here, they may be there, they may be there, the whole room may be full of ammonia molecules, but they are not going to participate in the reaction unless and until they get a chance to come and touch the platinum. So the concentration of the reactant does not, does not affect the rate because what is affecting the rate is the size of that platinum piece. Well, whatever is the platinum surface, that is determining the rate of the reaction. And the, it, so rate of reaction does not depend on the reactant, the concentration of the reactant. Therefore, the reaction is a zero order reaction. At high pressure, the metal surface gets saturated with gas molecules. When you apply a lot of pressure, the metal surface is saturated. Saturated means you cannot even put one more molecule of ammonia here. And if you could somehow fix that one, one uh, molecule of ammonia, it might have increased the rate of reaction by one molecule when there are millions of them. 
But when there is no space, it is totally saturated. No more molecules of the reactant can come in contact with the metal surface. And therefore, it, the change in concentration, if I keep stuffing more and more molecules of ammonia in this room, it does not affect the rate of the reaction. So the change in concentration does not alter the rate. Another such example is thermal decomposition of HI, hydrogen iodide, on gold. Again, gold is a metallic surface. You're using the thermal decomposition just as we used the decomposition of ammonia. So how, much, uh, how many molecules the gold surface can hold will decide, the, uh, will decide the rate of the reaction. So this was the integrated rate equation for the zero order reaction. With this, I'll wrap up this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.